welcome back then to another part of this build series of the DC Manta. If indeed this is another part or a continuation part, I've got to admit, I've had to re-record a couple of these parts, so I'm not sure if this is a continuation or if we're doing something again. I don't know. So please do just bear with me. But this is going to be a setup on Betafly and how to set it up from scratch with no knowledge and no information. And we're going to go through it all step by step. So first of all, you need to have your drone on a flat surface. And as you saw from a previous clip from the overhead, my drone is on a very flat surface. And click Calibrate Accelerometer. The next thing I would recommend that you do is that you get hold of your drone and you make sure that when you push it forward, it goes forward. And when you push it left, it goes left. Right, it goes right. And back, it goes back. If that's wrong then you need to go into your configuration tab. And here, this is where your board alignment is. So your roll, your pitch, and your yaw. And you will need to adjust that depending on how you've moved that board around. I can't give you a specific value to enter in there because it all depends on how your board is set up. So we're going to go through each one of these tabs one by one. And we're going to work out exactly what we need to do. Now, the ports tab... Uh, as I was reminded earlier on by somebody who left a comment, is individual to how you have wired up your drone. So you're going to need to know how you've wired up each one of your peripherals to which you are to know which one to select in here. And by you are, we mean on the board where it says TX and RX. Now I know that on you are number one is my DJI 04 Pro. So what I do here is I select MSP, and then I go to the very end over here to this drop down and I select VTX, MSP and DisplayPort. And that will give me that lovely HD OSD. Now, it's auto detected on UART 2 that my ELRS receiver is there. So I don't need to do anything about that. And then the only other thing that I've got connected to this is a GPS. And I know that GPS is on UART number 4. So I come down here. And I select GPS and I leave it on auto board and it will automatically work out the board rate. Just let me double check. Yeah. So that's how I've got it all set up. So now I hit save and reboot. And I'll just have to click re-enter. Because we're using Betaflight 4.6 and Configurator 11, it is a little bit different than the normal one, hence why it looks a bit different. But as mentioned earlier, the reason we're using this is so that we can have that position and altitude hold available to us, which is a great little feature. We're now going to move into our Configurations tab, and I need to grab my con uh, keyboard. And in here... There's a few things that we're going to need to change. First of all, make sure the air mode is turned on and that stops your drone just wobbling out of the sky when you go to zero throttle. We need to have LED and OSD on. And that is it for that. We're using a separate beeper so we don't need to turn on the D-Shot beacons. But what we do need to do is change this maximum arming angle to 180 and the reason we need to do that is if you get stuck in a tree and your quad is at 30 degrees and it's set to 25 it won't arm it will just physically not arm and sometimes if you're stuck in a tree all you need to do is arm it and just rev the motors a little bit and it will drop out of that tree so this could be the difference between you saving your drone and never seeing it again if you wanted to add your aircraft name in here um Obviously, it says TS13 FPV because he won a drone from us before. But what we can do is we can put... Oh, I've got it the wrong way around. So we do that. And then pilot name, uh, we can have it as sexy quads. Because uh, apparently I am um, not. So that's that done. Hit save and reboot. And then just hit connect again to go back into it and now we're going to go to the power and battery and i do know that there are some 4s lih uh, sorry some 6s lihv cells about we're not using any of those so our maximum cell voltage set to 4.3 is absolutely fine because the maximum we're going to be charging to is going to be 4.2 so even if we go over by 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 we're not going to be anywhere near that the reason why you would set this for anybody who's wondering, if you are using an LIHV, you would set this to 4.4. And the reason why is 
If you set it to 4.3 and you plug in a battery that says it's on 4.35, it will detect it as a dead battery with an extra cell. So for example, if you plugged in a 6S, it would detect it as a dead 7 cell. If you had a 4S, it would detect it as a dead 5 cell and you'll be instantly getting land now. You've got no voltage left warnings. So that's why that has to be set right. That is really important. If you're never going to use an LIHV, just leave it on 4.3. But if you think, oh, well, I might do in the future, but I haven't got any now, just set it up now to 4.4, hit save, and away you go. Problem solved. Now, fail safe. We're going to set this to GPS rescue, and we're going to have to input a few details. Because this isn't a bind and fly quad, we're going to have to input a few details. So we want our initial climb to be let's set it to 20 meters so wherever you are when you lose altitude it's going to climb another 20 meters so if you're flying at 120 meters and you lose signal and it climbs another 20 meters that puts you over the legal limit so bear that in mind ascend rate 7.5 return ground speed 7.5 maximum pitch angle 45 descent distance 20 1.5 1100 1700 1250 15 and 8. Allow arming without fix. So, allow arming without fix means if you go out and you think, I don't really need GPS, I'm just going to fly 10 foot in front of me and just do a few tricks or I'm just going to test a few things. I don't really need GPS. You'll have to wait to get 8 satellites before you can take off. But if you allow arming without fix, it'll let you take off. But please remember, and I do always say this in every video and I will always continue to say this, Please remember, if you take off without your minimum number of satellites, whether you set it to 8, 10 or 1, when you then have a failsafe, it will just disarm. So if you're flying over water and you've decided to take off without having that failsafe or without having those minimum satellites and you lose signal, it will just drop straight into that water. Or worse, if you're over people, it will drop onto people. So please do just bear that in mind. It's a great little feature to have. Uh, especially if you're going to be flying somewhere where you know it's not going to be a problem. But otherwise, you might want to uh, to keep it on. Save and reboot. So the next one we're going to go to now is going to be our PID tuning section. So as you can see, we've got no uh, non in here so what i'm going to do is just very quickly i'm going to uh, input all the details and then once i've inputted all the details i'll come back to you and so this is our pid tune that we've set up by all means pause this video if you need to take a copy of it and use it as and whenever just remember that it's different on different hardware and different setups so just if you are going to copy it i've got no problems in you copying it whatsoever if you need any questions ask away but just bear in mind when you've copy it over to your drone make sure you take your drone out and test it before you do anything else just to make doubly sure that everything is okay these are the filter settings and again by all means test these this is a great drone you can pretty much push this even a little bit further i've got to be honest but that is what it is when it comes to rates it's a very personal thing however these are my rates and there's a few things that i would recommend that you do in here to help you especially if you are sort of newer to the game but your center sensitivity my opinion i would always set to 10 because that gives you that lovely precise control in the middle of the stick max rate on a five inch i generally set to between 16 and 1800 on the roll and the pitch and on the yaw i set a little bit lower i set a little bit higher at expo to 0 0.25 on the yaw and then 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 when it comes to the roll and the pitch that gives you a really crazy snappy drone whilst also giving you that little bit of control and sensibility in the middle if you need it for any reason by all means use them or don't if you don't want to that is entirely up to you so now we're going to move into our receiver tab and the first things first we need to make sure that our roll is our roll our pitch is our pitch our yaw is our yaw and our throttle is our throttle and it is now in here if you are setting up a ELRS quad, you need to set CRSF when you flash it and also in here. Uh, make sure that you have RSSI ADC turned off. That will give you a much better feel. And obviously, if, you are, if you've soldered a 
um, receiver on, it needs to be a serial. If it's one that's on the board, generally they're SPI receivers. We now go into our modes tab and I have already set this up, but I'm going to show you what we do. So if we want our arm and we haven't got anything selected, all you need to do is set it to auto and press whatever button on your controller that you want to be your arm switch. So I press that button there and it's changed it to aux one and that's in the position that I want. Now, the other things I've also set up here is alt hold and position hold. Um, actually, that's, that needs to be like that. So we've got alt hold and position hold on one just for the sake of uh, showing you that little panic button that we showed you uh, probably last year, I think now. Uh, we've got GPS rescue set up, which should be on this switch. Yep. We've got beeper set up on... I don't know what switch that's set up. On that switch, we've got... Total mode set up on that switch. And one of the most important things, we've got a pre-arm set up. Why do you need to set up a pre-arm? Genuinely, guys... My advice to you is always, always, always set up a pre-arm because it is safety. If somebody, and I've done it where I've picked up my controller and I've knocked my arm switch by accident, but because I haven't had a pre-arm, or because I have had a pre-arm switch set, uh, it's not been disastrous, but it may have been when I was holding it or Boy Wonder was holding it. It is so easy to do. And if you've got pets and you put your controller down while you plug your drone in, it, again, it's just so easy for something to happen. Whereas a pre-arm, it's a bit like an ignition switch. And if you set it to a, a momentary switch where you have to physically hold it down, there can be no accidents and there can be no problems. So please, guys, please do set up a pre-arm switch. I know I'm quite evangelicalistic about that, but I do really believe it's it's a, it's a good thing. In here, we can set up different OSDs and different rate profiles to change, and we're going to have a video on that, but we're not going to go into that on this one. We're just going to... This is a setup video for you guys that have built your own drones and that need to go through Betaflight to get it up and running. Servos, we're not going to touch. GPS, this particular GPS, we have it set to U-Blocks, Auto Configuration, and that's it. Now, we're not going to get a signal at the moment because we haven't got a battery plugged in. But as we've shown on some of the videos, or if we haven't shown on the videos yet, we will show on some of the videos that the GPS works in these settings and the settings that we set in the ports tab. And that's going to be checking our motor direction within Betaflight. Now then, you eagle-eyed amongst you will see I have a piece of paper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin these motors up and make sure they're going in the right direction. So open up Betaflight. Now, we are going to need a battery on for this. Uh, personally, I leave the smoke stopper on for this because it'll only let so much power through. And all the solder there. Cheeky. So, if we go into the motor tab, first of all, plug in our lipo, and then we're going to go to motor test. Now, you can go to motor direction. This is probably going to be the, the best way of showing you. And we'll go to individually. So we're going to want to spin up number four, and it's going to need to spin this way to be the right direction. So if we put this on here now and just tap number four, and we can see that's going in the wrong direction. So if we press reverse, it's now going in the right direction. Now we go to motor number two, which should spin that way. And that's also in the wrong direction. So reverse it and we're all good. That's, let me just make sure that I'm doing this in the right way because I'm doing it upside down. So number four should push it down. It does. And number two, again, if we do it from this side, just for best practice, it should also push it down. And it does. So if we go to number three, and this should now push the paper upwards. And it's pushing the paper downwards. So again, just reverse. And on to number one, which again should be pushing it upwards. And it is doing. So that is now. If we now go back into motor direction test. And if we go to wizard, it'll spin them all. Hold 
So we've got to individual and we're going to go to number four and this should push the paper down towards us. And it isn't doing. So we're going to reverse it. And number three should push the paper upwards. And it isn't doing. Now it is. I don't think I pressed save, did I? Number one should push the paper upwards. And it is doing. And number two should push the paper downwards. And then reverse. I want you to save and reboot that, so why? So all our motors now are in the right direction. So we can unplug our lipo. Do you want your um, props in or props out? I run props out always. There's no performance differential on props in or props out. Props out, make sure that if you hit any mud, it'll sling it out and away from the camera, but into the flight controller. And props in means that you'll end up getting it slung towards the camera. It's entirely up to you which one you run. Make sure you select bi-directional D-Shot if your flight controller supports it. All of them do pretty much nowadays. You may need to flash Blue Jay onto your ESC if you're using a BL Heli S ESC. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a video, especially for you. Set your motor pulse, so you, depending on what motors you're using, depends on how many magnets are in your motors. Generally speaking, for a five inch, it's 14, and for a sort of a two and a half inch to a three and a half inch, you're looking at around about 12. Your motor idle, most quads nowadays are okay at 5.5. You've got a 3D ESC uh, to fly like Zoe FPV if uh, your props and your flight controller supports that and I think Boy Wonder and I are going to build a 3D quad I think I think the time has come it's, it's been long enough hasn't it Boy Wonder in our OSD tab this is how I personally have my OSD set up so I've got my latitude and longitude at the top the reason I have that is if I crash my drone and I have done and I don't know where it is, I can go back to the very last frame in the video and find out on the latitude and the longitude exactly where the drone crashed. And that helped me a few weeks ago, and if I can remember, I'll try and link the shorts video that I put up in the top right-hand corner now. And ultimately, the way I found that drone was literally my latitude and longitude because I couldn't see it. Always have your altitude on here to make sure that you stay safe, stay safe and legal. Number of satellites, so you know when it's safe to take off. Your home direction arrow and your total flight distance and speed. Down here we've got throttle position, battery average cells, on time and your voltage warnings. Over here we've got RSSI, link quality and DBMI values. That's how I have my, uh, pretty much all of my drone set up. I just find that to be the best way. But we can also set it so that you can go to a second profile and third profile and have less and less on them. So if we go to profile number two, and I do have a video for this coming out pretty soon if it's not already out. This PC is so laggy, it won't even let me change it. But yeah, I'll show you the video another time. Video transmitter, because we're using the DJI system, we don't need LED strip. We've turned on, but we're actually using a fly high FPV strip, which just needs to be soldered into the relevant pads. This is a 24 volt. LED strip, so this gets soldered into VBAT direct, or the power cables, depending which way you want to do it, doesn't matter. Sensors, tethered logging, and black box, we don't need to worry about, but if you followed all those steps, all those steps should 